This shows you as heavy as I was. How loud are you? About 280. 18 plus percent of our children right now are obese. If you go with the flow in America today, you will end up overweight or obese, as two thirds of Americans do. I don't want to be fat for the rest of my life. I've got diabetes. Sleep apnea. High blood pressure. I get dizzy when I get up. Everything's hurting now. We don't now take this as a really serious, urgent national priority. We are all of us individually and as a nation going to pay a really serious price. No que están los pobres ahí esperando hasta que se van los carros para poder jugar. Sí, ¿Y ellas son sus amigas? Pues sí. ¿Y usted tiene sus niños aquí? ¿Y tiene sus niños aquí? Sí, mire, el, el mío es el de la playera blanca. Y como no tenemos dinero para transportarnos a los parques que están retirados, porque ¿cuánto nos cuesta el, el bus? 1.50 por persona. Si yo que nomás tengo un niño, le pienso, son tres dólares y tres de regreso son seis. ¿Y qué hacemos? Nos quedamos aquí y lo único que hacemos, vamos al parking. No es tan buen ejemplo para... ¿Por qué no eres un buen ejemplo? Bueno, porque... Estoy un poco flat. Pero, ¿pueden ellos hacer un parque un poco más grande? ¿O un parque mejor? ¿Alguien aquí? ¿Cerca de aquí? Porque... All these parking lots are like kind of the park we have. Aquí en Santana hace falta un parque para los niños. Orange County, California is one of the wealthiest counties in the United States. Orange County has a very high number of parks and park space. In fact, Per 1,000 residents in Orange County, there are 41 acres of parks and open space, but not in Santa Ana. This red circle reflects the proportion of kids that are overweight or obese. Look at the difference between that circle and this tiny little circle in Irvine, and all of this yellow, which reflects relatively high rates of wealth, right next door to these deep pockets of poverty, overweight, and obesity. So what is happening here is that we have data that can document that not everybody has the same resources to fight diseases. And at the end, the epidemics are reduced to the pockets of poverty. Latinos are highly concentrated in Santa Ana. A vast majority of them, very poor. Immigrant families working two jobs, three jobs. And we saw the streets were very unsafe. Thin pregnancy, cans. And then we saw that what was fueling this epidemic of diabetes and obesity was right there. Diabetes was killing our people, and they didn't have health care. They didn't have any program in Spanish. 
how could a place with one million Latinos not have programs in Spanish or services for them? Here is where Sarai's families live. And in these apartments, they charge 1,300, 1,300 a month for a two-bedroom apartment right here. Wow. And then we have three, four families in one, in, in one apartment in order to share their rent. Buenas, aquí tienen a Lolín jugando. Hola. Gracias por permitirnos venir acá. Hola, de corazón. Hola. Me a verte, ¿verdad? Bien. Sí. Este, uno de los retos que enfrentamos como adultos es que tenemos que tener varios trabajos, no solamente uno, sino varios trabajos. Uh -huh. Y a veces entre esos varios trabajos se nos van lo básico, que es pagar renta y, y poder sobrevivir a la situación. Here in our community, we have um, little trucks and they sell junk foods that are not good for you and they're very accessible. You just walk outside, come back in and there's no places to go and play. We don't want to go outside because there's a lot of gangs and it's not safe to go outside. And we just stay in and watch TV, you know, eat. It's not a good thing to do. For us to, to transform these communities, there has to be a way in which people can appreciate the assets of the individuals and the community, even if they look like they have nothing. They have a lot to offer. Yes, hi, this is Gina from Latino Health Access. Okay. We wanted to have a, an organization that could involve the people in the community in the solution. Hola, ¿cómo estás? Promotoras are community workers. They are the heart of this organization. We think that everybody should be part of the solution, that everybody has something to offer, and we include those talents. So if you know how to dance, you are going to organize a group so we can have exercise. And we had people with diabetes teaching people with diabetes. Le gustan los frijoles charro. Hizo arrocito, los vegetales, ¿Usted cree que usted no va a quedar lleno con esto? ¿Sí o no? Six, five, María was our first volunteer 18 years ago and is helping with the breast health program together with Esperanza. Last year, they outreached to 9,000 women and Berenice, who started with us when she was 16 as a youth promotora, and she's a kid from the neighborhood that is helping children. Don Alex, he leads us how to help the older adults in this community. These are moms in the community talking to moms in the community. Low-income families talking to low-income families. People with diabetes talking to people with diabetes. And these community workers develop relationship with people that then goes deeper. Agárrese bien, doña Bienve. Sí. ¿Sí está Londra? Gracias. Sí, sí. ¿Sí? ¿Sí está? Gracias. 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 ¿Cómo está, doña Hola, Hola, ¿cómo está? ¿Cómo está? Bien, bien. bien. Recuerda que venimos hoy a hacer tu visita, ¿verdad? Sí, hay que ir. No tiene pendiente. Gracias. Since December, I've been off my insulin, so now I'm controlling my diabetes with pure my medication. Yeah, my diet, my diet, my diet and my exercise are mandatory. 
since I was nine or 10, I used to weigh more than 200 pounds. I developed diabetes. And what happened to me was because of the lack of not taking care of myself, um, three years ago, I started losing my sight. I actually went blind. I didn't want to die on, on being another victim of diabetes. I went to the best hospitals, and they kicked me out of the hospitals. They told me, you know what? Unless you can come up with $20,000, then we can't do anything for you. You know, we can't operate on you. We can't help you. So that's where I got involved with Latino Health Access. My sight is not perfect, but it's better than having nothing of, of what I had before. We know that we have these problems. Unsafe streets, no parks, no time for your kids, fast food outlets, and you have kids that are very obese. There are many communities in this nation that do not have the resources to fight this epidemic. So we are talking about a disaster for communities in this country. What diabetes and obesity is doing to this nation is crippling the families and the individuals. I need this country to talk about low-income families so we can really design realistic strategies. Convene us formally and welcome everyone. The task being undertaken by the committee is to identify a set of critical recommendations that are fundamental for progress in obesity prevention. This morning, uh, we have America Bracho. Uh, America is the executive director of the Latino Health Access. This center uses very participatory approaches to community health education. We're very pleased that you can join us this morning. Thank you so much. At the heart of the work of Latino Health Access, we have the community. We recruit them. They come to our classes as people with diabetes as parents of kids that are overweight, as women with cancer, as women that are victims of domestic violence, you name it. When they come to use a service, what we see is a person that is entering our organization to learn how to participate. They participate first taking care of themselves, then taking care of their families, then taking care of their communities. We believe that for a person that is, has diabetes today and is going to go blind today, we need to do something today. And if a kid is overweight, we need to put resources so that kid can achieve a healthy weight. And then we also need to improve parks or create parks long term. So there are things that need to happen in our community, short term agendas and long term agendas. I believe any strategy wanting to defeat obesity needs to be community centered. So we have to invest in this inclusion. That's very powerful, thank you. Yeah. I do think that community participation is really important to the ultimate success of our policies. And, and we've learned that organizing people in communities has immediate impacts on their own health and hopefulness. Immediate. Mm -hmm. I think America is right. You've got to have the short term today, and you've got to have the long term. If I only fight for parks, what am I going to do with a person with diabetes that is blind today? But if I only help the person that is blind today, what am I going to do with the many kids that are going to go blind? It is unfair to just propose short-term solutions. And it's very unfair only to propose long-term solutions. We have to do this together, combined. Are you guys ready? Yeah. All right. All right, just a little bit, guys. One more. We are in the middle of an area that doesn't have parks, not a single park for thousands of families. We are creating a park in a parking lot. For two hours, this becomes a park for the community. You want a jump rope? Come on. You get it? This is our investment in prevention. This is our investment so we don't have all of these kids in our classes with diabetes. We want them to actually have a healthy life. 
One of the things that is also amazing about some of the children, they didn't know each other and they were neighbors, you know, because the children were inside, you know, playing video games or on the computers and, you know, here they're, they're, they recognize each other. They said, hey, you know, you're my neighbor, let's come out and play now. We talk and my kids have fun, they play. There's no places right here to walk and meet friends because there's no parks around here. half acre, and this will be the first park in the 92701 zip code where kids can be active. Wow. We are going to have two playgrounds, one for little, little kids and one for kids that are older, so they can have a safe space where to jump and, and run and be kids. When you started the program, you were five feet three. Look, at now you're five six. I can do the weight on you. Oh my God, Angel. Oh, you're 144. Okay. When you first started the program, you were 202. Look at that picture. What do you think? Who's this? Muy orgullosa de mi hijo de que lo ha logrado por su salud de él. Sí. Pues me siento contenta de que él ya puede correr. Uh -huh. De que en las noches se sale a correr afuera de, y antes no lo podía hacer. You know, there is a power in knowing your neighbor and becoming a community. And in order to participate, to be part of the solution of this obesity epidemic, you are going to meet those neighbors, you are going to come to learn something, and we are going to generate ideas. And those ideas are going to become strategies. Please join us in transforming this place for all of us, for our children. This is your house. This is your home. The weight of the nation is very light if it's supported by all of our hands. And it's extremely heavy. It's an incredible burden if we don't do something about it.